on with this story of the travelogue, I guess. I really want you to think about this, though. In 1855, let's pretend we're in New York now, and we're coming to Michigan. Many of you, of course, being historical people, have forefathers. You probably have heard stories of some sort before, but I like to think when I'm talking the story that I was there. In any case, John and Martha's children, they had seven of them. They had Martin, he was the oldest. Dan was next to the youngest. William, Harrison, Harriet, Lucinda, and Rosa. Rosa was only one. And the boys were all mixed in between, between one year and 17. But Dan was only two or three. Their first stop was in Ionia. Well, that bothers me. Why, why in Ionia? What, what does that mean? They, I want to go back just a minute in that part. Why did they even bother to come to Michigan? What was there in Michigan that attracted them to come here? And I had to figure out this to my own way, that word had come back from the Holland Grand Rapids area that made it a good place for the, for the Dutch to come. And so I'm sure they came in a caravan and so this 800 mile trip, they have really planned to go just to Grand Rapids, Holland area. But for some reason, John Vanderbeek and maybe another one, they wanted to go farther because the graduation act was on, 50 cents an acre, so he could get some property awfully cheap up there if everything worked out. So what they were going to do, as I mentioned the 50 cents an acre and the graduation act, what you had to do is go to stop in Ionia, find out where there was land available, and this is the kind of map that they had. Now, maybe some people have seen a map similar to this or younger, but this is the one that I found from a colonial abstract that's no longer in Gresham County. I'm sorry that all of you can't see it, but up here in section two, which is north of St. Louis, is section two where the Vanderbeek spot 160 or 320 acres, really, 320 acres, and they paid 50 cents an acre, which would be 16 or 18 dollars. And so you're there in 1855, and I'm trying to think, what do you live in? There was no sawmills, there's no nothing, so tonight I just put a picture on your, to just think of your forefathers. They came here and there was no place to stay. I think some of the Oxcart people, from what I've been told, had a tent with them. So they pitch a tent till they, he, uh, the John and his young boys could build something like this. This is what they had. So I'm assuming that something like this was in uh, John and Martha's place, and Matilda's place up there in section two uh, that I had here in Gratiot County, Pine River Township. Something happened though. Let's see if I have it on this page. I think it's the next page. Something went crazy there in 1856. For somebody who wanted to buy John and Martha's place. Here is the, the deed from Wilson, Nelson Reed to John Vanderbeek for $1,000 for this property. On a land contract, my great-great-grandfather sold this up in section two, and this is something you can look at later, it's fantastic. And they sold this in section two and moved some other place. I don't know where he moved because it shows a little bit later what well, something else is here. But it showed that he sold it, and this is 1864, he got it back. The guy didn't pay. <laughs> so 1864, they're back there and sat there in the, up in the woods in that deal, and so uh, they didn't pay, so apparently it looked like a deal's a deal and it didn't work out. There was a lot of shenanigans going there, if you read in the history of Gratiot County. It is something, I hope that you all have ever read something like this. It, it's fantastic. Now let's see where I'm at. 
I guess we got that part, and now I want to talk about the Civil War part of our family because this, uh, this, this is important too. <coughs> we had four boys, remember? I had Dan, and we had uh, Martin, we had Harrison, and we had William. Well, the Civil War came up, and there's Ralph Ely over in Elma, you've heard about. He decided to be the big shot in Gratiot County and asked all the volunteers that wanted to go, it'd be a couple, three weeks for it, be have a lot of fun. So, <laughs> yeah. William and Harrison joined the Gratiot County Volunteers under Ralph Ely in 1861. Look on page one, 180, you will find the history of the war pertaining to that family and the things that went on after that. Well, it didn't work out the way they expected, because William got killed down there, and Harrison got hurt so bad when he came back to Michigan, he didn't last till he was only 44. But the, the, uh, the interesting part of it is, Martin, who was the oldest of our boys in the Civil War business, in 1865, back there in this book, they asked for the last people to be drafted. And what it amounted to, there's hardly anybody left. Most of the women were taking care of the property then, but Martin was around 27 or 8 at the time. And so he was supposed to go, and he'd only leave one boy left. That was Dan, who was too young to go to the war. But they had a deal. If you look in this history part, you could find out where Dan, or excuse me, Martin and other people said, I don't want to go, but if I can find someone to take my place, I'll give you 10 or 15 bucks. And they found it. There was a list of people in the book there, right, page 180, of Martin Vanderbeek giving $10. Somebody took his place in 1865. Well, that worked out. He stayed home and ran the farm because these two boys were gone and, and so on. And they, they had quite a lot of property now because they have moved down into, at that time, they moved down into a, another area, which I'm about to show you. But in any case, the last part of this Civil War part I wanted to mention, the last battle that the Vanderbeeks and the volunteers around Gratiot County was in was in the Shenandoah Valley in Tennessee. And so the war's over. Now what do you do? How do you get home? Does anybody know how they got home? They walked. All of them walked home. Just like the people walked from, my family walked from New York to Gratiot County. They walked home, if, unless you had a horse. They didn't have any horses, but this is the way they got back home. It was the darndest thing for me to find that out. Now I've gone over some folks that I kind of grew up around. This is my grandfather, William and Cora. This is a picture here pertains to where my grandfather and so forth was. If you were looking here, this is Jefferson Road. You know where that is. Here's Bagull Road out here at Jimmy Miller's place. Here's Madison that comes across. And I want you to pay attention to this little, this, this, this little here. I'll tell you something about that here in a minute. There's a little crooked road here. They call it Gruet Road. Gruet Road was the only way that the Vanderbeeks and many others out there could even get to St. Louis because it was all wet down through here. And if you look here, there's still property in 1889 to be purchased, as there was a whole lot of it. About a third of the county was still available in 1864. My grandfather bought this 40 right here. It's late. It was so wet. There was ducks on it all the time, I guess. It was so wet, he bought that in 1917 for just $13 an acre. And so this property right through here, when they left Section 2, from 7 to $11 an acre is what they paid for it. I have the deeds. I looked at them again today. It's the darndest thing to, to think what that was. Now I want to tell you about my grandfather and my grandmother. First off, Grandfather 